Hey, hey, everybody, Jerry here from Android Central, and we're going to have a look at the Google On app. That's the app you use to control Google's new OnHub routers. So kick back and be ready to rock out. Wait, what? Okay, we're not going to rock out, but we are going to have a good look at the app. See you all in a second. So when you first fire up the Google On app, you come to a little screen here after it loads. Hopefully it'll pop up and tell you everything looks good, and you'll see two choices. We're going to look at Wi-Fi access because it's a little less complicated. This gives you your network name, and if you tap that button, you can look at your password. And yes, it's fun to mess with your neighbors. And if you choose to share it, you can share it through Google Plus or Gmail or anywhere else. You can also copy it to your clipboard. And anywhere in the app, up in the upper right corner, you have a chance to send, send feedback or view the help file. Back on the overview screen, you'll see a little floating action button down in the bottom right. If you tap that, it fires up a network check. It's like a speed test. It tests your download, and it still tests your download. And it'll finally test your upload, and then your upload is complete, and it tests your internal Wi-Fi. When it's finished, you get your results to show you how fast everything is, and then you sit back and look at that extra fast internet you paid for and what happens to it on Christmas break. You can share this with anybody if you'd like. You just tap the button that says share, and you could brag to your friends if your internet wasn't so slow, or you can test it again, and I don't have time for that right now, and you don't want to see that. Back on the app's main screen, you can tap the gear icon in the upper right to take you into the settings. The first one is basically just the Wi-Fi access screen we already looked at, so we won't talk about it. But the next one, Advanced Networking, has some stuff you might want to know. Tap the DNS settings, and you can set your name servers to be automatic, which uses Google servers, or the ones from your ISP, or custom ones if you feel like entering them. Your WAN settings are the settings that OnHub uses to connect to your ISP. And if your ISP has anything special you'll want to put in there, you'll notice you have to have everything shut down and disconnected to actually change anything on the OnHub. If you don't have any special instructions from your ISP, you probably leave these alone. You can enter a static IP for any connected device on your network if you need to. You can see I've done that with my Steam box. It's simple. You press the plus button and choose which device you want to assign it to. And then just enter in the last three numbers of the IP address that you want it to be and then save it. If you have a device attached to your network that needs to communicate directly with the outside and not go through the firewall, you can forward your ports. You'll need to know what that is and how that's done, but the method here that the Google On app uses is pretty simple. Universal plug and play is enabled by default, and that's good for things like a Chromecast or a printer, but if you need to disable it, there's a section here where you can open it up and disable it if you like. If you go back a step, you'll find some settings for the OnHub device itself. You can adjust the brightness of your LED, slide it to the right to make it brighter, or slide it to the left to make it dimmer. If you have an ASUS branded OnHub, there's some settings for the wave control, the proximity sensor. You can tell it which device to make a priority, and we've talked about that before. You also have some information about your software version, as well as release notes and other information there. You've got a device mode. You can run it as a standard router or as a bridge if you need a network extender. There's your settings to do that. You also can get the details about your particular device, like which model number it is or what its IP address is. You can restart your OnHub router itself or factory reset it. I'm not going to do that because it will kill my internet. Under the general settings, there's a few things you can do. You can decide who can manage your OnHub. Uh, works just like Gmail or any other Google app. You've got a Google account there. You can add somebody, send them an email, or you can just keep it to yourself. You've got app and support details. Now, these are details about the app, not about the router itself. So this is where you find your app version or get support. And finally, very important, privacy settings. Uh, this is where you can choose to share with Google or not share with Google. Those are things you should look at. Back on the main screen, you've got a little device map, a network map, and you can tap that and it'll expand and give you a little more information. You can see which devices are connected. Uh, you can also monitor how, you know, how much data they're using. You can do that in real time or set an interval, like see how much they've used in the past hour or the past seven days or the past 30 days. 
This is also where you'll set a priority device. You tap the action button down the bottom right and you pick which connected device you'd like to get priority and how long you'd like it to have it. Tap it, then save everything and you're good to go. Take you back to your network map and you'll see a little star beside the device that currently has priority. If you tap on a device, you get a little bit more information about that particular device. You get its IP address, its MAC address, and again, you know, the information about the data it's currently using or it has used. All that's left to look at now is the hamburger menu, so tap those magic lines and pop it out. You should be used to this if you use Google Apps. You can decide which account you're using the app as from the drop down at the top. You can add a new on hub. Let's say you bought a second one to extend your network. You can send feedback to Google, which is a great way to troubleshoot. It collects system information and it tells you that it does that. So you need to be aware of that before you write a happy little note and send it off. And finally, there are the help files. If you want to get into the advanced stuff, you kind of need to know what you're doing. But Google does a good job here with basic help. So if you get stuck, go ahead and tap that button and have a look at them. That's about it for the Google On app. Uh, it's nice, it's simple, but it does allow you to do a little bit more advanced things. And we're going to be trying all those things and even more. In the meantime, though, I am out of here.